I have a call from an inlaid at the correctional facility of California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for using. Uh, you know what, I'd just like to, uh, maybe I'd just like to tell my story and, uh, Maybe there's people that can relate to it that maybe uh, maybe I can talk to or maybe that like, people that can learn something from what I, what I went through and what I'm going through to uh, maybe to avoid having to do all that because at least at the end of the day, if I didn't ever get out of here, which I don't know if I will or I won't, but at least at least I know I could do something of that nature and that would make me feel happy at the end of the day. So I don't really know what I can offer, but I just want to put myself out there and see if maybe I can offer something to somebody out there yeah see because when i was younger uh what i didn't tell a lot of people growing up was is i was i was uh, abused uh, sexually at, when i was really young and a lot of that time i kept all that bottled up and i had anger and i had this big secret that i ran around with and i kept to myself that nobody knew and it made me feel really uncomfortable and really like like kind of disgusted so at the same time as i was keeping my gang life from my family I was keeping this other thing that happened to me when I was a kid to myself also. So I had all these, these things in my head that I was having to deal with. And then I was having to prove myself, you know, and, and like and like to the homies and what we were doing and what we were standing for. So every time I got a chance to act out on that, I did. And it was like a relief because for a minute, even though it, it really don't make sense to me now, but at the time it did because it made... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. You know, because I couldn't let nobody know, like, the, 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 the bad thing that happened to me because that would make me, like, less of a man or something. So what I had to do was I had to show everybody that I was just completely the opposite. I was this stand-up guy that, you know, just nothing could break me. But at the, same, at the same sense, I was dying inside because I had these secrets that were really killing me. And if I would have just stopped and talked to somebody, I think I could have prevented all this from happening. And I really wish I would have, but... So if anything, I would just hope that if anybody hears what I'm saying and they've been through what I've been through, you know what, it's not a, it's not a bad thing to go and talk to somebody because if I would have talked to somebody, it probably would have saved my life. You know, I, I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to get out, but if I ever do get out, I know exactly what I want to do, and that's what I want to help people to not make the same mistakes I did. And if there's people that are as hard-headed as I was, I know it's not going to be easy, but... If I can show people that I've been there and I've done that, and I'm like I'm not some chump that's just trying to make some stuff up, so they'll, they'll so they'll listen and just behave, then maybe I can connect with somebody and I can save somebody's life and not have to do 25, 30 years uh, in prison and waste their life like I did. Because man, there was so much regret. It really like broke my it broke my spirit, you know. So if I could just help one person like like growing up to change and like to go out and just say you know what i don't want to go home because i want to go with the homies tonight but i'm going to go ahead and do it because it's the right thing to do you know what that would have saved me because man i met so many christmases and, and thanksgivings i i really regret it man I, I really do so i just hope that it could help somebody because man i just wish i would have listened i don't know why i didn't but i did and just not do some of the stuff that I did, you know, because it was, man, it, it was just, a, it, a lot of this was unnecessary if I would have just stopped and talked to somebody and told them really what I was going through inside, but instead I was embarrassed and I was ashamed, so I just really wish I would have talked to somebody, so maybe somebody can hear this and say, you know what, fuck, that's exactly what I'm going through, and go and talk to that person, you know, that, 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 that psychiatrist or, or the therapist or whatever, all these people I was lying to. If I would have just told him the truth, I could have got the help I needed, but I didn't. And so it's just, I, I can't I can't tell this story quick enough. I mean, come to me that I, I could look up to and be like, hey, you know what, look, let me talk to you for a minute. And sit down and have a real conversation and I could understand this person. I would have been like, man, you know what, all right. And that's who I would have latched on to instead of my homeboys out there just, just doing dumb shit, you know. And it, it was really for nothing. And, uh, you know, like I said, I don't know if I'm ever going to get out. And either way, I don't care. I just want to do the right thing and try to help somebody because, man, it killed me inside when I lost everything. I was like, man. Okay, so what do you go by? Uh, cowboy. What's your nationality? Uh, Hispanic and white. I'm down Hispanic in uh, in uh, prison, but I'm I'm mixed race. Were you part? Of, were you ever part of any gangs, prison gangs, groups, or organizations? 
Yeah, I was uh, on the street growing up. I was part of a uh, Southside Riverside Tiny Winos gang. Uh, and then here, I've been with little uh, little cliques, you know, just a couple little cliques, but I realized that wasn't really too much for me. But uh, yeah, just mostly on the streets as a, as a kid and growing up. Okay, where's it located at? Uh, right there, like Cypress and Tyler, uh, like right there by uh, Norda Vista High School. Okay, so Riverside, the uh, IE area, correct? Yeah. What are you convicted of? Oh, shit. I'm convicted of uh, murder, manslaughter. I caught in custody. Uh, I caught in house murder. So uh, I got a uh, 58 to life murder. I got a manslaughter shooting on the street. And I got a carjacking attempted murder. They hit me with three hot ones back to back when I got hit uh, in. 2003, 2002, 2003, and 2004, so uh, they got me with three good ones this time. How long is your sentence? Uh, I don't have an EPRD until 2058 uh, right now. And how long have you been incarcerated? Almost 20 years. What made you join the gang? You know what? I, I just wanted to, uh, to be a part of something and prove like my worth, I, I guess I, I, I asked myself that same question and I just wanted to show where my heart was at so that I could recognize, you know, other people could recognize and I just wanted to be a part of something that was the right, just the right thing, but I realized that was just way wrong now, but I just wanted to be a part of something that meant something and uh, I just, yeah, I don't know. When you first got sentenced, how you feel about it? And when you first went to prison and hit the main line, what was your mentality? Uh, the first, when I first uh, when I first got sentenced, I didn't uh, inside. I I kind of blocked everything out, so I didn't really care about anything. Uh, I was already numb to all of it, and uh, you know, I had already been through a lot, and I knew I was pretty much washed up, so. I kind of went to prison with the mentality like, you know, well, fuck everybody and uh, any chance I got, I, w I was going to hurt somebody because I was just angry. And uh, so I really didn't feel a whole lot. I just felt, what I did feel was I felt better when I took it out on somebody else. It was like a relief. Um, what exactly was your position among the Southern Hispanics? Uh, just just a soldier really for uh, like big homies and stuff uh, like uh, different big homies uh, like uh, like like Duty and uh, Duty from Kuka and uh, Chato from Laverne just different big homies you know just uh, just doing whatever you know I, I didn't never really get into any high position but just somebody needs to get whacked or whatever that was that was what I did you know and um can you explain the uh the rules and policies of the Serenials? It's really, it's just, uh, really it's structuring, uh, it's structuring our, their own race to, uh, to be as, I, I guess the best person that we could be and to, uh, you know, just to abide by law so that we, not only we stand for something and show unity and loyalty, but also to uh, keep uh, some type of uh, law and order inside prison and really, what it's about is to structure everything so we have an army to back each other up for whatever uh, for whatever reason and whatever we're moving, whatever money we're making. But uh, really, it's just it's just all about unity and uh, uh, you know running as a, as a whole and uh, making that as most impeccable as we you know as we can as you know as, as strong as we can. And uh, if anybody makes that look bad, then you know we fix that. Okay, what constitutes a removal? Ah, uh, shit, if somebody, uh, somebody continuously makes, uh, like, the same mistakes and they don't want to learn, then, uh, you know, then, you know, people get beat up, they get stabbed, and if they keep making, like, if people got a drug habit and they don't learn, the, they don't learn their lesson, maybe the first time they run up a debt, somebody helps them, and they keep doing it, well, then they get beat up because they ran up a debt again, and then they keep getting stabbed, and then just... You know, people that don't want to learn and don't want to uh, try to grow as an individual, then they get what they they get that side of the life. Okay, who will be chosen to conduct the removal? 
just uh, a lot of times, uh, a lot of times, if uh, there's there's people like myself, I just wanted to do stuff because I was angry. But a lot of times, if people they messed up or like they ran up a debt or they fucked up, then they'll have these people. Let's call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. They'll have these people that oh, for whatever reason, maybe they lost some money or they fumbled a kite, whatever. They got then they clean it up like that usually, but like. For myself, anytime there was something that needed to be done, I just like to do it myself. I didn't like to go with nobody. I like to go alone. What happens if these individuals survive a removal? Where do they go from there? Well, a lot of times uh, people just take what they got coming and they'll they'll join back into the uh, to the organization. But other times people will get casted out and then they have to earn their way back. Uh, if they fight their way back and they stand tall with whatever they got coming, maybe they get beat up, maybe they get stabbed, and they don't say nothing, then after that, then they'll be welcome back in. But uh, it just differs d depending on the situation. Okay, for the individuals that are chosen to conduct a removal, if they refuse to conduct their removal, what will happen to them? Yeah, well, a lot of times, if, if you refuse and you owe, then you're going to get got, and then there will be other people that will that will do that but people like myself that were just angry and looking for a reason I look for reasons like that for people like that so I could just take out just so I could I guess so I could shine for them guys so they could see that you know because being an asset means something in here so if you're an asset then you know nobody wants to look or think bad about you so uh, I just try to shine as much as possible but those people will they'll get what they got coming too and then they'll still get the people that had that coming did you ever do a shoe term? Yeah, I did. Uh, I was in the tournament shoe in uh, Tehachapi shoe. Uh, just in 2010, I caught indeterminate. Uh, I, I was, I was, I had, uh, I had a building on the yard in uh, North Kern, and we got swooped up on, and we had a riot, and I got caught with a weapon, and they, they just, they tied me into some stuff that were, was organized on the yard, so. Uh, they ended up putting me in the shoe and then the, the big homie back there, somebody wasn't paying and so I took care of it from him because uh, I knew the guy and I messed with him so, uh, so I ended up indeterminate uh, one thing after another, yeah. So, uh, yeah. How long was your shoe term? Uh, it was indeterminate, uh, meaning that I never really had a determinate date. I just stayed back there for forever until they decided otherwise. Okay, what do you have to say to the youngsters out here that's uh, involved in a uh, gang activity or thinking about being in a gang? I'd just like to say, man, uh, all that being bored and all that, uh, that you think your parents are telling you something that's stupid or, or uh, whatever the case may be, in 20 years from now, they're not, you're not going to be thinking the same way. So I would just suggest that you really think about it before you act out or do something stupid that little voice in your head that's saying don't do it, sometimes listen to it because it can mean the difference between you living your life in here for the rest of your life or being in my situation now and having a family and kids and just realizing that you made a huge mistake. For the individuals that uh, go to prison for a year or two or catch a short term thinking they're going to be released in a year or two, um, is that a guarantee they'll be released once they uh, go to prison? No. No, hell no, no, because some shit can happen if, if you don't jump with the homies. Like, if somebody's getting into it and they put their hands on a homie or whatever and you don't jump, then it, it, it's all bad. So most times they're not. People are going to jump. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Yeah, there's a lot of people that come in with, like, two years and end up with life. So it's not, there's no, definitely not. What made you change your life around? What events occurred and uh, um, and things of that nature to make you realize uh, this uh, gang lifestyle, so to speak, uh, you know, isn't for you no more? Well, I got, there, there was a point in the shoe where uh, I got, and I, I actually cracked for a minute, and I had to decide if uh, there was something that there was when I was in medical talking to somebody and it was on the wall to, on generalized anxiety and I realized that everything that I seen on that board had to uh, had to do with what I was going through in my life and I had to think what was I going to do was I going to let these people keep telling me what I could and could not do talk to doctors and 
you know, talk to the psychs or was I going to just continue struggling with what I was dealing with inside and, uh, you know, just put on a brave face. And I just, at the end of the day, I decided that uh, taking care of my own life uh, meant more than uh, following some orders by some people that I didn't agree with to begin with. So uh, it didn't change from there, but slowly from that day, for me making that decision, I still kept making bad choices and I still used drugs, but eventually one thing led to another and now I'm where I'm at today. So I realized that uh, I think age and uh, just learning from, uh, you know, learning the hard way, it, it, it kind of shaped me into the person I am today and I, and I know where I want to go now, I just need to get there. How do you cope with the situation you're in that not knowing that you're ever going to get out? How do you cope you with that? You have 60 seconds remaining. All I can do is just hope for the best and just uh, kind of put it out of my mind and just, I, I actually don't think about it because if I think about it, it'll, it'll kind of break my mind and uh, I, can't, I can't afford that, so I got to keep pushing, you know?